Hi, I'm Dan from the Rivers Trust and it's a pleasure to be invited here today to talk to you about uh, the Wire NFM Investment Readiness Project and how we're looking at new ways to fund natural flood management uh, and how we use natural capital investment to help fund nature recovery at the scale and pace that's required. So who are the Rivers Trust? Well, the Rivers Trust are probably the largest grassroots organisation in Europe uh, working with communities to look after rivers. And we are the umbrella body for 60 local member trusts working across catchments in the UK to help protect rivers for the benefit of people and wildlife. And with funding from Esme Fairburn Foundation and DEFRA, we're working in partnership with United Utilities, Floodry, Co-op Insurance, Environment Agency, Wire Rivers Trust and Triodos Bank. So, what's the problem? Well, Floods are the most frequently occurring natural disasters to happen in the UK. And in recent years, the UK has experienced devastating flooding on a yearly basis. This year, following storms Cara and storms Dennis, we experienced the wettest February on record, double the annual average. The 2020 floods led to 11 deaths and more than three hundred million pounds worth of property damage. Here in Manchester, following the 2015 Boxing Day floods, uh, Salford City Council reported over 700 properties were flooded, uh, which led to huge disruption to infrastructure and businesses. Uh, but we are also amidst a climate crisis and predictions only show the issues to get worse. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, showed that a 3% rise in temperature could lead to a further 400,000 people in Europe being exposed to river flooding, with the UK likely to be the worst affected. Not only are we in a climate emergency, but we're also experiencing biodiversity crisis, and we are losing biodiversity at a truly unsustainable rate. Uh, species extinction is occurring 10 times higher than any time in the last 10 million years. And in terms of rivers, um, migratory fish have declined by 93% since 1970, 93%. So we know hard engineered, carbon intensive flood risk solutions alone will not address our future flood risk challenges and must be supplemented with natural solutions that reduce the potential impact to property and infrastructure. Natural flood man management is a way we can work with natural processes to help reduce the impact of flooding, create green jobs, and then as a result, more wildlife and green spaces. It perfectly aligns with a vision to build back greener. However, the mechanisms to finance the implementation of natural flood management at scale in the UK remain a significant barrier to uptake. So this project is focusing on flood affected communities in the wire catchment. We have brought together partners in this feasibility project who all have a strong interest in understanding the effectiveness of natural flood management and how it can be financed at scale and pace that's required. So why the wire catchment? We're going to talk to Tom from the Wire Rivers Trust. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm the Programme Manager at the Wire Rivers Trust. We deliver improvements across the wire catchment and I'll be talking to you about our communities in the lower catchment and how flooding affects them. So, the wire catchment. The wire catchment is situated around 35 miles from Manchester. It's home to the Forest of Bowland area of outstanding natural beauty. It takes in the amount of this plain and much of the Fowle Coast. Uh, the mouth of the river wire is at Fleetwood and the catchment is home to a wide range of activity including agriculture and industry. Uh, the Wire Rivers Trust, well, we work to improve the river wire and its tributaries and its catchment as part of the Rivers Trust movement and the wider catchment-based approach initiative. Our projects focus on delivering multiple benefits for the wire catchment. Uh, we have a small but expanding team of three people and we host our local catchment partnership, which is the Wire Waters Partnership and the Wire Estuary Group, and we work with a wide range of partners. 
uh, flooding in the wire catchment. Like most quick response catchments, the wire is in regular flooding events, uh, and the flooding in 1927 and 1980 resulted in a typical response, uh, which includes maintenance and drainage, uh, hard flood defence structures, and an indifference to the river, its ecology and its natural processes, uh, which are the defining features of any river, really. Uh, it has left us with a river that's uh, geomorphologically compromised and not performing for nature in any way, shape or form. So our catchment is home to a very proactive community. Uh, the community groups formed the Wire Rivers Trust, the three angling clubs. Um, it's also led to the, num- the formation of a number of large flood action groups, uh, and both dependent- independently and in partnership. These groups deliver a wide range of activity to increase awareness of and solve issues in the wire catchment. A particular example of this is the Churchtown Flood Action Group, who created their own flood defence bund in the village of Churchtown, uh, which has proven to be a very successful project. Uh, and one that's received a number of awards. So we'll take a look at some of our existing natural flood management or NFM project in the wire catchment. Uh, the wire NFM project is part of the existing DEFRA community NFM program and that focuses on the uplands of the wire. We also have some lowland NFM projects in the Thornton Flood Risk Resilience Project which is working with local flood risk management authorities to reduce flood risk by using NFM in urban areas by creating wetlands and river, and delivering river restoration projects. We can also involve some of the more health and social aspects of river restoration within that, uh, looking at health walks and social prescribing in terms of volunteering to deliver some of this work. Uh, There are a number of barriers to effective delivery which remain, particularly uh, that is the barrier which is the lack of funding and resources to deliver NFM at the scale and pace which is required to see it fully integrated into the flood risk management strategy in the wire. The overall goal of this project is to achieve investment readiness for a catchment sale NFM solution for catchments that can be implemented with green and social investment. The wire seemed like the perfect place to trial this new approach. So why are the Rivers Trust leading on this project? Well, as an NGO charity, we have the ability to engage with a number of organisations and businesses. And we also have a really good working relationship with farmers and landowners to enable us to deliver these features on the ground. We also wanted to ensure that uh, this was a social enterprise where any profits or revenue was going back into the local environment. Helping us on our journey is Triodos, a European sustainable bank. And Dan Hurd is going to talk to us about how we get to investment readiness. I'm Dan Hurd, I'm Head of Corporate Finance at Triodos Bank. We're working on a groundbreaking natural capital project up here in the wire catchment with the Rivers Trust. I'm going to be talking to you about the challenges of raising capital for this type of project. Hello, my name's Dan Hurd. I'm Head of Corporate Finance at Triodos Bank. We're the Corporate Finance Advisor to the Rivers Trust on this exciting pilot natural capital project in the upper wire catchment. Our role in the project is to uh, help create the business case which will attract external private investment. Uh, That's the holy grail at the moment for the natural capital sector to prove that we can actually uh, bring in private money to deliver landscape recovery. I think we'd all agree that a river catchment is a logical place to start with a pilot project. Um, River catchments can deliver multiple ecosystem services from source to sea. Uh, This particular project is focused around natural flood management. That is the primary driver. But we will be looking to develop revenue streams for three other uh, services, including carbon sequestration through tree planting, uh, biodiversity gain and improved water quality. And the aim really is to uh, learn from this project. And there's a number of things that are going to be vital learning for us. You know, how do you bring multiple stakeholders together around a shared vision for the catchment? Who will pay for what ecosystem services? Um, How important is the hydrological model to bringing those beneficiaries on board, you know, and then the ongoing monitoring. So, um, you know, we've got a lot to learn, uh, which will stand us in good stead for when we look to um, replicate and scale. We'd all like to do projects at scale, but uh, you've got to do the learning somewhere. And uh, I think we can already see three months into this that um, this is working really well as a pilot. What we're finding is uh, there's an important intermediation role required in this project. Um, You can see from that table on the right hand side, there are multiple stakeholders in a typical river catchment. 
all of whom probably have their own commercial and environmental objectives and all of whom need to somehow come together around a shared business case and a shared vision. So, um, for example, there are 10 landowners in the upper catchment. We need to bring them on board because it's on their land that the NFM interventions are being delivered. Direct beneficiaries, by that we mean um, maybe the water company, insurance sector, local communities, local business, organisations who would directly benefit from reduced flooding. Uh, indirect beneficiaries, maybe uh, other businesses uh, in the catchment who might be buyers of the other ecosystem services. And then we've got obviously the local communities and the local authority as well. So intermediation and negotiation with all those parties is crucial. The Rivers Trust are very, very well placed to do this. We can see the you know, Rivers Trust as a movement are involved in every catchment partnership in the UK and have the uh, you know, on the ground expertise and the relationships to uh, bring all these parties together. Obviously, our role is to help uh, coalesce that into a, an investable corporate structure. Uh, and ultimately raise the finance. We're looking to use a fairly conventional corporate structure to deliver this project, which will see the uh, establishment of a, uh, a special purpose vehicle, which will be a not-for-profit vehicle with an asset lock and any profits being reinvested back into the catchment. Uh, that approach has worked quite well actually over the first two or three months because it uh, engenders a bit of openness and trust in our uh, discussions and negotiations with all the various stakeholders. Um, so the SPV will be raising uh, external capital from investors. Uh, there may be an opportunity to blend that with some government funding. Uh, the SPV will then be entering into lease arrangements with landowners in the catchment on whose land the NFM interventions are going to be delivered. And finally, the SPV will be entering into contracts with beneficiaries of those ecosystem services. So this is a way of trying to contract in the revenue streams. And this is the crucial part of the whole project, really, because without revenue streams, we're not going to be in a position to A, pay the leases to the farmers and landowners and B, uh, repay that initial investment. And finally, uh, here's a snapshot of some of the learning we're uh, getting from the uh, project already. Uh, just to pick one or two out, you know, what does it take to bring uh, beneficiaries on side? What will they pay for? What sort of contracting structure might be acceptable to them? Uh, what is the reaction of the landowners to being uh, invited into a, uh, a long term lease to host NFM interventions on their land, particularly, you know, with the uncertainty of Elm? coming in in four or five years time. Uh, and also the role of uh, the Environment Agency and DEFRA in helping us overcome some of the challenges that we get as we go through these discussions. So we're, we're making good progress. Um, it isn't easy. Uh, I think we'll get there. And uh, I'm very hopeful that we'll uh, be in a position to feed back on uh, a successful project in the Green Summit 2021. Thank you very much. So, one of the key goals of this project is to see how we can scale up and replicate this project. Can we use the lessons learned and adopt them to larger areas or even different ecosystem services? Amina from the Rivers Trust is going to talk to us about how we can apply these theories to urban areas such as Greater Manchester and how it can be utilised in the green recovery. Hi, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the scalability of the YNFM project. And scale is quite important because the bigger the scale, the more exponential the natural capital benefits are. Investment in natural flood management and the other uh, natural capital approaches can deliver a multitude of benefits to communities in the natural environment, especially when delivered at scale. And this is why we believe the wire NFM project is so important, because on one hand, it is about delivering benefits to the local community and the wire catchment by making them more resilient to flooding. But on the other hand, it is about scalability, about informing the broader range of potential sources of investment in natural capital, which currently rely on um, limited number of business models and ad hoc funding strategies. And in this aspect, we believe the project is of national and international relevance, particularly in the current context of post-Brexit, post-COVID-19 green economic recovery and climate change emergency. More importantly to today's discussions is the relevance of the YNFM project to Greater Manchester 
and how the learnings from that can be used to scale up and accelerate investment in Greater Manchester. An investment in natural environment is quite relevant in the face of some of the tough challenges that Greater Manchester region is facing, particularly around climate change and uh, some of the extreme weather patterns that we've been experiencing, especially around flooding. The picture there, um, the pictures there actually tell some of that story, showing Rochdale Town Centre when it flooded in 2015, and more recently showing the flooding in Rivington Bolton um, during Storm Francis. And that second picture is quite relevant to me personally because I live about five, ten minutes away from Rivington in Bolton. But there are other challenges as well, um, particularly around the, the fast urban growth we're experiencing in the region, accompanied by some of the most socially deprived areas. Uh, in the country, all aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting economic challenges from that. And um, for those of us who live in the area, we went through the first lockdown at the height of the pandemic and then also through the second lockdown, uh, the local uh, lockdown, which is currently being slowly lifted. But even in the face of such tough challenges, Greater Manchester is actually a trailblazer when it comes to um, delivering the green agenda. It's got an ambitious five-year environment plan, which is looking at making the region carbon neutral by 2038. It's got great initiatives such as um, Ignition, Natural Core, City of Trees, and is in fact the first city region of the UK to develop a natural capital investment plan. And in relation to that, there are a number of ways in which a scaled up version of the Wire NFM project can be applied in Greater Manchester to deliver against that natural capital plan. For example, by accelerating delivery of large scale shovel ready uh, nature based projects, therefore fast tracking a lot of the recommendations set out by the natural capital investment plan, but also um, accelerating the ambition towards 2038 carbon neutrality. And it can boost green economic recovery to creation of green jobs and using these fast track projects to employ and train people, especially young people whose job prospects have been badly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So scaling up and accelerating green investment in Greater Manchester can deliver exponential natural capital benefits and socioeconomic transformation on a number of levels and deliver the benefits identified uh, by the Greater Manchester um, Natural Capital Investment Plan. For example, by making the region more resilient, by scaling up conservation and enhancement of habitats and wildlife, by improving air quality and reducing emissions, by supporting the local economy, by reaching out to deprived communities through creation of jobs and access to nature, but also by addressing spatial health inequalities, by improving health outcomes as both mental and physical health, and all in all, by making Greater Manchester a more attractive place to live, work and invest, as set out by the, the ambition of the plan. All of this should be underpinned by great partnership working. I've mentioned the YNFM project and, of course, um, initiatives like Natural Course uh, and Ignition, but also by bringing in on the ground expertise through mobilisation of NGOs and carbon partners, for example, by learning from other great examples across the Northwest, such as the work that the Ribble Rivers Trust is doing in Lancashire around improving health and well-being um, through access to nature and aligning and joining forces with uh, United Utilities and the Rivers Trust for putting together a proposal for uh, green recovery in the Northwest, showcasing natural capital investment in the Northwest and very much putting Greater Manchester at the heart of that proposal. Thank you. The Rivers Trust are really excited to be working on this groundbreaking project and we hope that lessons learned from this project can aid the recovery of nature at the scale and pace that's required. If you want to find out any more information about the project, please visit our website.